in this video I'll be ranking the current Colin Games fights and as well as I'll be explaining my own personal opinion for the fights and thank you to everybody who voted on the poll it was nice to see everyone's opinions and let's start off with number four so for me number four is Itadori versus Higuruma in my opinion this fight is the one that is narratively the best however it lacks in actually being the best fight so far and this is why I think first let's talk about Itadori and his development during this fight Higuruma was a perfect person to fight Itadori because it allowed to show us the growth that he had seen through Shibuya he has accepted his place of being a cog in the system it's been a big factor to him and his character development however I think this is only touching the surface of more for Itadori's character development because he's got to a point where he's accepted the conclusion of what's happened in Shibuya and saying that yes I did do it however that still shows that he still has further to go in terms of his storyline because he needs to get to a situation where he accepts himself that he was not at fault for what had happened it was not his fault that he ended up losing the fingers and becoming that and even though he makes a good point in highlighting his weakness of being weak that's why when Higuruma's speech on human beings being weak it hit so much harder because it currently depicted the struggles that Itadori had and I think narratively it was the best fight the reason I don't have it higher than any of the other fights is because the fight didn't conclude properly with obviously Higuruma ending the fight and transferring the points to Itadori however I think it introduced an interesting character in Higuruma who's been one of my favourite introductions into the Culling games it gave us a new usage of domain expansion just saw Higuruma's short hit ability so his one being the fact with deadly sentencing where it would then enact something called a courtroom and it's a different style to the differences in domains and especially ones to that of the past with the little mini dialogue that we got from Tengen we could assume that a lot of the domains from the past were more sure hit domains and that is similar to the fact of what Higuruma had so I think this is an interesting concept that Gege gave us through these fights and I think it was a nice character introduction for one our MC to grow and two another character who I think will have a big plot line in the eventual color games Number three would be Megami versus Reggie. I think Megami versus Reggie was an insane fight. And it was one of the fights where it had a back and forth where I was very confused to how far the fight was going to go. Before we even get to that, we got the brief introduction of some interesting comedians Takaba who has an interesting curse technique which is beyond broken if he uses it correctly however going back to the Megami and Reggie's fight I think Reggie's ability of whatever he writes on his receipts coming to life is a very broken ability and it gave us one counter to Megami's domain expansion before I get to Megami's growth and the fact that he showed in this arc in this fight specifically I think Reggie was an interesting character and a different person that we've seen back into the high era he showed us a simple domain and having a hollow wicker basket as well as has given us indication to his potential relationship and potential cursing of Megami at the end. I don't know if that is anything of significance or if it's just something that is foreshadowing but his quote at the end with let fate toy with you until you eventually die like a fool I think is something that is going to be important in the coming future of the story. However, Megami showed a lot of growth. I mean, he was weakened and obviously Reggie can use his ability to restore his health and wounds. And I mean, Megami managed to come out of top. He had a battle of attrition and I think it was the grittiest fight that we got. And it gave us a lot of plot twists. I mean, there was you pull out trucks. Megami pulled out the house from the top even when Megami used his domain expansion and I mean it was a lot of unexpected stuff which I think I love about JJK fights and reading it in its totality rather than week to week I had a greater appreciation for the fight and I think it was beautifully done. I think it was one of my favourite ones and apparently Megami is the only one with an actual body because everybody else has survived and he, with him killing obviously Reggie and the other people in that colony it was an indication to how far Megami wants to go to saving his sister. I will end this fight and now we'll go on to number two. So number two is very difficult because between one and two they're extremely close to me. However this will be the free for all between Uru, Kuroroshi, Yuta and Ryu and I think this fight has actually become so much more better for me the more I have read it. I think the first thing is the fact that it's one a free for all and we had a basically fatal four way from WWE in JJK. We had so much unexpected moments and so much unpredictability and we got to meet two elite level ancient sorcerers in Uru and Ryu. I'm hating a little bit on Kurorushi but his ability is obviously insane as well but I think the main combatants being Uru, Ryu and Yuta gave us some of the best fights that we've seen in JJK. 
we got to see not only the ability of sky manipulation we get to meet somebody from an era who has the highest output in the series so far it gave us indications to things such as curse energy reinforcement and how utah can make up for the deficiencies for somebody such as Ryu who has the highest output we got to see how all three people and we got our first indication to a freeway domain expansion even though it did not continue and we got to see Rika for the first time after a long period I mean now that we have this new Shikigami Rika and with him and his partial manifestation we got to see more ability of Yuta and his broken ability in one mimic cry him coming out top in this high stakes battle I think this fight is extremely underrated and I think it's actually one of my favorite in JJK the fact that we got four elite level sorcerers going back to back and with the unpredictability that the fight had i think this fight is an elite and the fact that yuta came out on top just shows how strong he is but i think it's also given us a good indication to two individuals who can have could have major involvement in the story firstly somebody such as uru with her backstory being from the high era and assassin and her having some sort of hatred towards somebody i think that is a plot line that we can get explored Moreover, I think it would be interesting to see what Gege does with somebody such as Ryu and we know that with both combatants still being alive, I'm excited to see how far their character stories go. Number 1, and this is obviously would be Hakari vs Hajime. I think this was just the best hands that we've seen. It gave us two people in my opinion and it was the most unpredictable fight so far in JJK. Every time I thought Hakari was in any sort of trouble, he would pull out his domain expansion and manage to come out, out of a bad predicament. Moreover, it successfully delivered on two characters who have been hyped up. Hajime, who was the person with the most points at the time, so we wanted to see how strong this individual was, and he did not disappoint himself. And then we got somebody such as Hakari, who had been one hyped up from Gojo. We had brief introductions from him, and the fact that we finally got to see him in this fight, I felt like he met expectations as well. And it gave us two indications of two people who held back, but it gave us an insane fight to the death. We got Hajime who with the back to back hand to hand combat was insanity and his ability of his lightning strikes having one shot capabilities were crazy but then we had somebody in insanity such as Hakari with the fact that he can continuously hit his jackpot and loop continuous domain expansions. Not only but he had the highest application of reverse curse technique and he gave us the first ever domain locator with being able to move the coordinates of his domain expansion. I think also it gave us some foreshadowing of things to come with Hajime and his curse technique with this one time ability and it might give us indications to things such as binding vows with abilities if that's something that he has done or potential of a one time nuke ability if that is the range in which his ability is. I think regardless of this it hyped up two characters who are both continuous in the story and had some of the biggest unpredictability throughout the fight. I mean each fight was insane and every time we would see Hakari at the brink of death and his domain expansion I was hyped to see the next chapter. And I think this will end up with my rankings for the Cullen games and what will be your rankings. I want to say thank you to everybody who voted on the poll again and I hope you guys enjoyed this video.